Hey there and welcome back to another English video. Today I'm going to be teaching you one of my vocabulary tips to help you increase your variety when you're speaking and learn vocabulary more easily. The name of this technique is just add one and it's going to be very clear why that's the name as we go through the presentation lesson today. The plan for today then is really going to be to help you identify where you need more vocabulary because we all need vocabulary when we're learning English but in some areas we may need more than others and because time is really valuable you want to make sure that you're prioritizing the right type of vocabulary to increase your variety in areas where you're actually going to use them. It's also really important to focus on the quality of the vocabulary that you're and not just trying to learn hundreds and hundreds of words because it's going to be much better for you if you choose one really important useful word instead of trying to remember hundreds of words and then forgetting them all when you're in conversation. And this is also going to be really important to add real variety to your vocabulary which is something that all of my students tell me they struggle with and it's something that's going to help you sound much more like a native speaker and much more fluent when you're speaking. Before we even get into this whole method, this process that I'm going to show you today, why do we need more vocabulary? So it's a really important question. When you can say something, when you can express an idea, why do you need other words to say the same idea? If you can say, it's hot, or it's raining, or I want a pizza, why do you need other verbs, other nouns, other adjectives? Why do you need other vocabulary? So just have a quick think before I give you any answers. Have a think yourself. Why do you need more words? Really, the reason is, is that you need variety when you're speaking. If you use the same words over and over and over, it gives the other person you're speaking to the impression that your English level is very basic. Maybe you're a beginner and that's why you don't know a lot of words. So you repeat the same words over and over and over. And also it can become quite boring and repetitive for the people you're speaking to. Imagine that you speak to the same person every single day for one hour. If you only use a very small selection of words, you always say things in exactly the same way, you always use exactly the same words. For the other person, it's going to get very boring and very predictable when they speak to you because you're always going to say the same things. So as much as it's about you being able to maybe speak about things in a more precise way, maybe express different ideas, it's also to help the people that you're speaking to to keep things interesting and varied while you're speaking. So you're not just saying it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good, because as you can imagine, that's not the most interesting conversation and you want people to think you're interesting. And as I mentioned, if you don't use variety, you sound more like a beginner. If you use lots and lots of variety, you sound much more advanced because it makes it sound like you know a lot more words, you know a lot more English, and that really then makes people believe that your English level is even higher. So if you can use a good amount of vocabulary, maybe you can give them the impression that actually your English level is better than maybe where it is. So it gives a very, very positive, um, very, very positive <laughs> uh, impression to the other person. Here's the method then. How are we actually going to do this? To go through this whole process, what we really need to do is understand your vocabulary. You need to think about the words that you actually use, how you use them, the types of phrases that you, you need when you're speaking, and how often you use them because everyone's vocabulary is very, very different. Because let's imagine you're a doctor. You're going to be using lots of medical vocabulary. Whereas if you are just someone who is traveling, you're not going to need lots of medical vocabulary. You're going to need other things like vocabulary for hotels or restaurants. So just because we're all learning English doesn't mean we all need the same vocabulary. It depends on how you use English, which situations you speak in. And your hobbies and your interests. If you're really obsessed with football, you're going to know much more vocabulary and you're going to need much more vocabulary than somebody who hates football, as an example. And then we're going to be focusing on your most common. So as I've mentioned, everyone has different vocabulary that's more important for them. It's also going to be focusing on the words that you actually say more commonly. So even if you're thinking of subjects that you 
really enjoy and you feel like you need more variety, you want to focus on the words and the phrases that you use most commonly, because if you add variety there, you're going to get the best return on investment. The time you spend memorizing and working on that vocabulary is going to then immediately have an impact on your speaking. If you only use a word or a phrase that you use maybe once a week, once a month, then actually the chance of you using it and actually getting value from that study time is going to be quite limited. So you really want to be using your time wisely so you're studying the things that are most important for you and that you're going to use most often. Then once we've identified that and I've shown you the process of how you find and add this vocabulary and this variety, you need to practice it. And this is something a lot of people forget is you have to practice. You have to practice the words you're learning to memorize them so they become natural. That's how you learn everything that you know already. And so part of this process is really about practicing and using it so it becomes comfortable and natural and you don't even think about. It. And then finally, you repeat the process. Go back to the beginning, choose another phrase, choose the same phrase, and then carry on. As I mentioned at the beginning, it's always important to remember the title of this method, which is just add one. Okay? And as we go through, you're going to see exactly why that's so important. Starting off then, identifying your vocabulary. So as I've mentioned, we need to focus on the vocabulary you need to learn. I've got some questions here that you can see on the page about, you know, what you talk about most, identifying phrases that you use on a regular basis. For example, if you often send emails, do you always open the email in the same way? Do You say, you know, I am writing to talk to you about or for things like that. Think about th phrases that you use all the time that are super, super repetitive. Maybe everyone says, how are you? And you always reply, not bad. As an example, in that case, that's maybe a good way of thinking about some way you could add some variety. So maybe write some of those phrases down if there's phrases you think you use too much, or maybe you're bored of a particular expression because you feel like that's the only one you use, then that's probably a good one to identify. That's another simple way of doing this. If you just want to immediately pick something, think, what word or phrase do I use more than anything else in a conversation? So to give you an example, when I was studying Italian a long while ago, every single conversation I would just say, I think, I think, I think. And so that for me is where I actually developed this technique because I, I realized that it's just really boring for me when I'm speaking and I'm using the, just the same expression over and over and over. So I used it perfectly well and it's, it makes perfect sense, but I needed more variety. I needed other ways of saying I think, so I wasn't just saying the same stuff over and over and over. And that's then where I was able to develop this. So I focused on how to best improve that phrase, how to best add variety. And now I have a huge range of variety when I'm trying to explain that kind of. Idea. And again, remember, just pick one. So even if you're making a list of phrases that you use all the time, go through those and just choose one that you're going to work on first. Doesn't mean that you're not going to look at the other ones. It's always good to have a list that you can then go back to, but you just want to focus on one thing at a time. Because if you try to choose 10 phrases, and then you want to add variety to all of those phrases, you're making your life much, much more difficult. If you just pick one phrase, and then you work through the entire process, and then you choose a second phrase once you've finish the process, you're going to learn the phrases more easily, you're going to remember them, and you're going to be able to use them in conversation much more quickly. So it's all about that return on investment. You study, you use it, and then it's worth studying some more. Then when you've identified your word or phrase, so as my example, if you decided you want to find a different way of saying, I think, how do you actually find what you're going to use. So there's a couple of links I've included here. You can use a thesaurus, you can find synonyms. You could also just speak to a friend or a language partner or a teacher and say, this word, this phrase, this expression, what other ways can I say this? So you just need to get basically find some synonyms or some phrases that mean exactly the same thing, or they work the same way in that context. So again, you probably want to make a list of a couple of those. So again, let's think of um, I think as an example. Okay, so maybe as a teacher, I would say to you that you could say maybe I believe or according to me, uh, in my opinion, just as a few examples off the top of my head. 
And you can write all of those down and then you have a list which you can start with. So it's, this part is really just about searching for alternatives. You don't have to narrow them down to one just yet, but you want to find a range of them which you can then go through and find the one that you really like. Now we have our list, we found some alternatives, we found some synonyms, maybe a teacher or a friend's given us a little bit of a list that we can work from. We actually need to choose which one we are going to work on and we're gonna actually start using in conversation or in our writing or when we're using English. Before we make the choice, the most important thing, especially if you found these online, is to look at the definitions to make sure that the meaning is exactly the same. Because what you don't want to do is choose a synonym that has a very slightly different meaning because then you're not actually going to be able to just replace the phrase. And the whole point of this idea is that you have a particular word or phrase, you can remove it from your sentence and add the new one. If it has a different meaning, then you're going to have to be really careful because you're not actually going to be communicating the same idea. So to give you an example, if you chose the word cold and you use cold all the time, if you, cho if you found an alternative which was freezing, as an example, meaning extremely cold, that would be great because they work in exactly the same context. It's a little more, it's extreme, but the meaning is the same, so you're perfectly fine. If you found icy, for example, which often can come up as a synonym of cold, it's not exactly the same because it means usually it's cold and there is ice. So saying it's icy and it's cold doesn't always mean the same thing. So you have to be really careful in that case that you don't choose a synonym with a different meaning. That's why I think it's always going to be good if you do have a little selection to find a native speaker or a, a teacher especially who can just advise you maybe which is the most common or which word would be the best one to use in that context. But using the dictionary and looking at the definitions, you will be able to also do that yourself. Once you have the definitions all sorted, once you know which phrase you're going to use, you just choose one. Again, just add one, just pick one. One. We need to be really careful here that we don't try and do loads and loads and loads. So we just choose one and then we move on. And when we move on, we need to practice. The whole idea of this now is that you have a phrase you use and the new phrase that you want to try and you need to actually use it so that then you actually have two phrases that you use. So it's all about taking one thing, adding it to your active vocabulary so that you start adding variety in all of your conversations. And the best way to do this is basically to remind yourself every time you're going to say the word or phrase you've identified, say the alternative instead. So if somebody asks you, how are you, and you decided not bad is a boring answer or you use it all the time and you decide to say, I'm fine, as an example. In that case, every time someone says, how are you, now you want to say, right, I'm going to use the new phrase instead. So you're going to say, I'm fine, I'm fine. And because the other phrase you already have, you know very well you use it all the time. So you want to force yourself to use that new expression instead of the one you would normally use. So the same as cold. If instead of saying it's cold today, my food's cold, instead of cold, you replace it with freezing. Now you have variety. And then you just have to repeat that. Just keep going, keep practicing. And eventually it will become natural and you don't even think about it anymore. You just have those two options and you can switch between them. Also to do this, you don't necessarily have to speak. You can write example sentences where you write sentences you would normally write with the previous word and then change it to the new word. You could sit and just talk to yourself and try to use it in, in sentences yourself. It's all about just using and creating phrases. So whether it's speaking or writing, whenever you're learning new vocabulary or new phrases, you actually need to produce the language. If you only read it, it's not going to be very easy when you are speaking because reading and speaking are very different skills. If you are practicing speaking by speaking, it's the same skill. So it's much easier to use when you're in conversation. The same if you, you're using this because you write lots of emails, write sentences. Because then when you're writing an email, if you practice writing, it's exactly the same thing. But it's all about just producing the language yourself. And a little tip. Always try and produce phrases that you would actually use. This is the biggest problem I find when people are doing grammar exercises or um, practicing learning new vocabulary. They 
write expressions that they would never actually use in real life. And so it makes it really difficult to remember. It's really important that you actually think, how can I use this word? Not how the textbook tells me, not how the lesson tells me. How can I actually use this? In what situation in my life would this be useful? Once you can identify that, it means that it's going to be really easy to remember in conversation because you have your own idea of how you normally use it. And this is the same thing with grammar. When you're just copying the grammar exercises, the sentences a lot of the time uh, are not something you'd say. You know, Johnny went to the museum. You maybe never use that. So you always want to make sure that it's, again, your vocabulary, your English, and you're using it in a way that feels natural and normal for you. That's it. We repeat the process. So let's imagine you chose one word, you found your alternative, and you practiced and practiced and practiced, and now you have two that you use interchangeably. So you're like, it's cold, it's freezing, it's cold, it's freezing. Perfect. But for some phrases, you're going to need more than two. Because you maybe use that, those two phrases now, and you still use them regularly enough that they are just super repetitive. So you want to add one more, and then practice and practice and practice, and then you have three. And then you can add one more, and then you have four. And as my previous example, this is exactly what I did in Italian. So now, just off the top of my head, if I think of the idea, I think, I can think of maybe six, seven, eight different versions that I can use in conversation and that I do use in conversation so I'm not repeating the same expression. And that means that whenever I'm speaking about my ideas or my opinions, which is very common when I'm having conversations in Italian, I'm able to do that in a way that doesn't just mean I'm saying, I think this, I think this, I don't think this, I think this, which is very boring. So I'm able to do that now because I use this process. I started with one alternative and I slowly added the others to my vocabulary so that they were really strong and really easy to recall in conversation rather than just trying to randomly use a big selection. And if you, the particular phrase or word you chose, if you don't feel like you need any more variety there, go back to your list that you made before, choose a completely different expression and then follow the process again add another word, practice it, practice it, and then you can go back to the beginning. And this is going to be an endless process because you're always going to have the opportunity to learn more vocabulary. But by focusing your attention, you're going to learn these new words and phrases very, very quickly. You're going to be able to use them very quickly, and they're going to become part of your active, natural vocabulary very, very effectively. And so it's really going to be the best way to study it so that you're remembering them and you're not just wasting time learning things that you're going to forget again in the future. Now, just a couple of tips. OK, as I mentioned, it's always good to have more, but you don't always need more. So there are going to be some expressions or some situations where you just don't need any extra variety because you don't use that particular expression enough. Or maybe the expression you have is just perfect in that context and there's not really any variety. To give you an example, let's imagine you write an email and at the end of the email you say, for example, looking forward to hearing from. And that's a sentence that you add because you're just reminding the other person you expect them to reply, which is a very common thing in each email. In that case, there are lots of ways you could phrase that, but in that case, maybe you don't send enough emails to that particular person where it, it matters, or maybe it just fits the purpose perfectly. You don't want to say, please reply, because maybe it's a bit rude or a bit, in, a bit direct. The same if you um, have a question, maybe the way you phrase that. There might just be particular phrases where you don't need extra variety because it just does the job and you don't use it enough that anyone else you're speaking to would even notice that it's repetitive. So you want to just be really conscious of focusing on the areas where you feel like you do need more variety, on the areas where you feel like you just say things in the same way and it's really boring. If you feel like the phrase you have does the job and you don't feel like it's repetitive or that you use it frequently enough to really cause any discomfort for anyone in the conversation, then it's probably not the right area to be adding vocabulary. And sometimes you'll come across new vocabulary um, like that and you'll, you'll suddenly say, oh, that's cool and want to learn it. That's not a problem. 
But the idea of this process is actually going to be identifying your weaknesses, identifying the areas where you lack variety and adding them yourself. So it's all about prioritizing. So don't try and study every single subject, just choose the most useful, the most common, and then you can work down the list. And if you're studying for hours and hours every day, you're going to go down that list very, very quickly. If you only have a little bit of time each week, maybe each week you're adding one new word, but that will accumulate very, very quickly, and it's still going to have a massive impact on your English fluency. It's also going to be really important to use vocabulary lists as a guide. The one thing I always remind all of my students is when you find a vocabulary list, like a list of phrasal verbs, for example, you don't want to just try and memorize all of them. You can. It's not impossible, but it takes a lot of time, a lot of energy. And for most people, if you try and memorize 100 phrasal verbs, you're going to forget probably 90 of them. Or you'll understand them, but you won't be able to use them in conversation. And the biggest frustration people always tell me about is they're learning new vocabulary, but when they need it, they can't remember it. And so when you have a vocabulary list, what you actually want to do is, again, this prioritizing process is actually go through and see which of those phrases you could actually use and would be useful in situations where you already use English there. So if there's phrasal verbs related to working on projects, for example, if you use English for work, then maybe those phrasal verbs will be very useful because you already talk about those subjects. So then you should be able to identify, oh, I normally say this this phrasal verb does the same job. Then you've made that connection and you can add one. If you try and learn 100 phrasal verbs without that connection, it also is much more difficult to remember because the idea here is that you're connecting new words to words and phrases you already know very, very well. And by making connections, you make vocabulary easier to remember. So it's really, really useful to do that. And finally, as always, whenever we end all these lessons, you need to remember the mantra, okay? It's always important to be positive. I can, I will, I must. When you have those days where you just think, I'm never going to be fluent, I'm never going to improve my English, always remember to tell yourself, I can become fluent, I will become fluent, and I must become fluent. And that's the end of the lesson today. So make sure you follow me on social media and you subscribe to the channel and all that good stuff. And remember that these presentation lessons are always available to download for free. There's a link in the description so you can download the PDF and you can keep it for your own reference and study and improve your English. And if you have any questions or if there are any subjects or tips that you want specifically to help improve your English for future videos, Put a comment in the video below and I'll be happy to help you out. If you are watching on YouTube, have a fantastic day and have a fantastic day improving your English. And if you're on Twitch, let's keep going.